With the release of Nvidia's new RTX 3000 series GPUs and the driver update that went live when those went on sale for both studio and game ready drivers, we got a new update to Nvidia's Shadowplay or GeForce Experience Share. It's called both even though I'm pretty sure Shadowplay doesn't actually exist as a word in their software anymore. This update brings 8K recording, it brings HEVC, although you can't toggle it as an option, as well as if you enable the experimental features, we get a lot of cool stuff, including auto overclocking of your graphics card. We're gonna look at that in today's video. Nerd or Die wants you to upgrade your stream today, including a free Wicked alerts and webcam overlay to get your spook on this Halloween, or their updated Clearview V2, which includes new color options, new layout options, and more, plus tons more layouts and options available on their site to take your stream to the next level. Head on over to eposvox.gg slash nerd or die to sign up and use coupon code eposvox to save 15%. I'm eposvox, your stream professor, and Boy, have I been waiting and waiting and waiting for an update to NVIDIA Shadowplay for a long time. And we finally got it. So I have updated to the NVIDIA drivers, the Studio the Studio 456.38, which released last week at the time of recording. And this brings forth the new Shadowplay update. But before we can get to the cool features, you will need to enable experimental features to see some of the cool stuff that we're going to be looking at today. So with that, I'm going to click Enable Experimental Features, and it's going to download and install a brief update for Shadowplay itself, or for GeForce Experience itself overall here. So you'll have to let that do its thing real quick. Restart now. That's not restarting your computer, despite what it sounds like. Just restarting GeForce Experience. Now, of course, full disclaimer, this is beta. The performance-related features I'm going to show you are completely work in progress, whatever. But we're going to look at some stable stuff as well. I just wanted to get you updated ahead of time. Once you have updated to the experimental build, it, would ac it will actually inform you of some of the updated settings with the experimental version, which we will cover. But first, I want to cover the new capture options, as I find those to be very cool and very important. So click the little settings cog and go ahead and enable the in-game overlay if you did not have that already. If you wish to use these features, click settings. And that will bring up the normal shadow play, you know, overall GeForce experience experience. Now with this, for the most part, not a lot of stuff have changed. You have the photo mode and game filter mode, which I showed in a previous video on setting up those filters in your game, if you haven't seen that. But under video capture, we have a couple new options. Well, we have one new option. The other one turns itself on automatically. Of course, as usual, you have control over your instant replay length. If you've never looked at Shadowplay, it's actually really cool stuff. Your resolution, your frame rate, 30 or 60 FPS, and able to kick that bit rate all the way up to 130 megabits per second for 4K. Now, if you are on an RTX 30 series card, you will also have 8K resolution recording limited to 30 FPS. And I tested this in my uh, 3080 review, and obviously I struggle to run most like modern games at 8K, but I was able to get some 8K footage of both Halo, the Master Chief Collection, and Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Remastered. And I'll have a link to the Tony Hawk gameplay in the description below, and you're seeing some of both of those games now. So that will be available to you, and that will record in the HEVC codec, which is higher efficiency, but harder to edit in your video editor if you're on a lower end PC. And if you have DaVinci Resolve Studio and a gaming grade graphics card, you're probably good to go. That's why I love Resolve. But for some users, it will be tougher to edit. However, it will be much better quality. You will also get HEVC if you enable HDR. So if you are playing games in HDR, which for a lot of games, there isn't an option in the menu, you have to actually pull up your Windows display settings and turn on HDR itself here, then it will automatically record that gameplay in HDR. Now, a limitation of that fact is that there is no option in here to control HDR versus SDR recording, nor to tone map the HDR to SDR. So the only gameplay recording you get is just in HDR. It's on a normal monitor, it's going to look gray, washed out, whatever. Now you do have the flexibility. If you just upload it straight to YouTube, then the final result will be properly tone mapped for SDR viewers and available in HDR for HDR viewers. And I have a gameplay sample of Modern Warfare 2019's campaign doing just that that you can view linked in the description below because it is gorgeous. That also records in the HEVC codec because that's required for HDR. Unfortunately, if you're doing any of the other standard recording here, you do not have the option to control whether you're recording in HEVC or H.264, and that is a little disappointing because it would provide better quality. But 
there you go. Now, the other big feature I wanted to show off, and it's actually, I guess, technically two features, but it's mainly wrapped around one, isn't actually shown up. You may have totally missed it, as we have already seen it, actually, and that is a performance overlay up here above the gallery. So you have all of your normal settings, but then you have performance here. Now, this will show up and give you a performance measurement of your graphics card temperature, the speeds it's running at, the fan speed, the utilization. I am on a uh, water clocked Titan RTX, so fan speed is zero, but you get the idea. And then you can actually change where that uh, performance overlay goes to view it over top of your game. So if you're testing the overclocking tool, which we'll take a look at, then you can actually overlay it on top of your game and see all of these measurements in real time so that you know how it's performing, how your overclock is doing, if you're actually getting better performance, things like that. Now I do wish as like a feature request that they had graphs overlaid, if you could actually get a hotkey to benchmark it instead of having to use their new NVIDIA frame view software, which we could do a separate video on if you like, uh, and all of that, but you can control where the overlay actually goes here over top of your footage, just like the normal recording indicator, frame rate indicator, all of that. Now that is for the overlay. Next, we have actual performance tuning. Here you can choose the per, uh, tuning type. By default, it's set to automatic and is completely turned off. However, you can turn it on and it will start to overclock your graphics card. You want basically nothing else running when you enable this because anything else, Chrome, OBS like I have right now, whatever, running on your graphics card while you enable the overclock will affect the results that you get because it will measure, you know, the load and the capabilities that it has. And various programs can actually clock your graphics card at different speeds based on what you're doing. And recording in OBS is notorious for downclocking your GPU because it doesn't really need a whole lot at the moment. So you want to close pretty much everything, then run enable automatic tuning and see what it gives you. So we're going to go ahead and do that on my Titan RTX here since I am completely water cooled custom loop it should be able to do whatever it wants in terms of thermal limits and we're good to go. So I'm going to say temperature target is I'm just going to crank it up to 88 C. I can't imagine that <laughs> it's going to get that hot. I've never seen it get that hot. My CPU gets hot in my custom loop, but the graphics card doesn't. We're going to run the automatic tuning and see what it says. Now I don't actually game on this machine, so I'm going to show you the results on my gaming PC as well separately, but it will potentially give me a little bit of an extra performance boost in DaVinci Resolve. Nothing that I'm going to test or be able to give you tangible results, but it could. So we're going to run that and I'm going to show you what happens just so you can see it. All right, we have pretty much everything that would be using resources closed. We're going to click enable automatic tuning. Disclaimer, it can cause some crap to happen. Agree and continue. Obviously, if you're overclocking your graphics card, it can cause instability, it can cause artifacting, it can cause glitches, and during the automatic overclocking test, it could draw too much power or produce too much heat at some point and shut down your computer. I had that happen on my main gaming computer, which actually has a faulty power supply in some way, so it shuts down at random, and so it actually shut down during the process, but then I just ran it again and I was fine. So this is going to go for a bit. It may not seem like it's doing anything for a little while, but give it... I believe like 10 or 15 minutes and it should be done and give you some degree of a change. Uh, I, I, the 3080 on my gaming computer didn't really have much of an overclock applied, but I'm betting since we're water blocked and stuff here and on a much beefier power supply, we're gonna have better results. You can actually see little spikes of usage on my stream deck with the hardware info monitor of the GPU kind of getting, you know, just pegged 100% for a little bit and then drop back down, pegged 100% a little bit, drop back down. Still running cool as can be though. <laughs> Percent on the gaming computer. That fan is ramping up. Ninety-nine. All right. Automatic scan gives us plus one hundred six megahertz <laughs> on the GPU clock. If the fan was running that high. That'll be a little scary. That got up to 2,500 RPMs to just get a 106 megahertz gain on our clock. I can't imagine that has a significant enough difference in performance. I'm not experienced with GPU overclocking, but from what I know from CPU overclocking, I don't know that that trade-off is worth it. Overall, this isn't... <laughs> I presented it as an overclocking tool. It's more of a tuning tool because GPU boost already handles pretty much all the overclocking you need on NVIDIA cards these days. So it will do all the automatic overclocking based on what you have available. So this is just kind of fine tuning that from the overall, you know, 
limits that are placed on it because each card has a little bit of a different like performance cap and things like that so it's just a little bit of extra fine-tuned performance and especially on 30 series it has that ecc memory so overclocking the memory kind of isn't even a good idea because it just kind of ups the error rate which will just hurt your performance instead of glitching so just wanted to present what ends up actually happening so yeah, nothing too crazy. I was really hoping with this new generation we would get a Shadow Play 2.0, but maybe next generation I've kind of pushed for it a little bit. I do have the overclock running on my gaming PC as well, so I can share results from that as well. Obviously, I don't really have hard locked before and after specs because the frequencies and stuff keep changing, so I'm just going to tell you what it gives me and good luck. Uh, <laughs> but these are tools available to you that they are experimenting with so that you can kind of see if you can improve your performance without needing MSI Afterburn or anything else. Like having that built in, especially with all the tools AMD has available through their software suite for overclocking and that kind of stuff, I'm very excited to see this come to fruition. So here's Shadowplay as of the NVIDIA 3000 series. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hit the like button if you enjoyed and so learned something or whatever. Subscribe for more tech education and stream guides. I'm your stream professor, Vox. I'll see you next time.